Hello and welcome to the Eastern Kicks podcast, a regular magazine program about East Asian film led by me, Andrew Heskins, founder and grandmaster of EastonKicks.com, and James Mudge, our leading writer. Hey, up. Each episode, we'll be taking a look at the latest films, news, and festivals, often chatting to filmmakers and stars along the way. Welcome to the latest show. This episode, in honour of the new Netflix series, we're going to take a look at horror mangaka Junde Itu and the many adaptions there's been of his work over the years. This time, James and I are joined by self confessed Ito fans, Colette Ballman. Hi. Hi. And Nina Doherty. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, of course, before we start off, I mean, particularly for James and myself, um, mm. there is that all-important question. Uh, <laughs> what are you drinking this episode, James? Uh, I'm drinking uh, Tama Vollen. Uh, it's a nice whiskey, a good thing to be drinking at this time of this time of day. So I'm off, <laughs> off the beer and everything else now. So, yeah, it's a very nice Speyside single malt, uh, which is appropriate mm. given that I'm in the middle of nowhere in Scotland uh, again <laughs> at the at time of recording. So. <laughs> Uh, how about yourself? What are you on? A, I'm, a good, I'm on a strong the old, beer. The old once again. Fair so, enough. Uh, <laughs> Tried uh, and tested. Me, uh, occupied. <laughs> Sound. Ne,あなたたち、お願いがあるの。聞いてくれる。Let's dive in with the chat. Uh, I mean, uh, I think for, there'll be a lot of people who might be listening to this uh, podcast um, who are who may well already be Junji Isu fans, and um, there might not be a lot that you you will learn because I think you know there's a lot of quite obsessive people there about uh, Junji Isu. That sounds a bit that sounds a bit bad, but you know, I mean it in the, in the sweetest possible way that that he he does have a very Strong following for yeah. for, for obvious for obvious reasons. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so while you may know a lot of what we're going to talk about, you know, if there's anything that, that those of you who know his work think we've missed or would like to talk about more, find us on all the socials, get in mm. touch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, we'd love to hear from you and and hear what your thoughts are. To other people who are only really learning about Junji Itsu now from the the new Netflix series, Junji Itsu Maniac. I'm doing air quotes, which is always good for radio. Um, this is hopefully this will be an introduction to to you to to know a bit more about him, about his work, and um, what what is worth checking out from his from that that catalogue. Um, so I think the, the the good thing to start with would be just to kind of you know who is John Dietsu, um, you know what what, what give us a, a bit of an idea of his his background. Right. Um, so he was born in uh, nineteen sixty three in Sakashita. And like many of us horror fans, he was uh, introduced to horror by older siblings, his two older sisters. But the works of uh, Kazuo Umezu, who is another wonderful, wonderful um, horror manga artist. And his his career um, as a manga cub really started in 1987 when um, he submitted a story to a monthly Halloween magazine. And... uh, Got a horrible honourable mention in the Kazuo Umesu Award, which must have been really cool because he was a big fan of his work. Mm. Um, and that ended up being um, what we now know as the uh, Tommy series. So um, it just kind of kicked off from there. And he's very well known for these kind of very beautifully detailed, really grotesque um, illustrations, beautiful black and white illustrations. I mean, I mean, it's something that's quite, you know, obviously we are, you know, we're audio, it's quite hard to describe. But I think one thing that you particularly see in his work, and I think it is worth talking about, is, is that, that they are very, very beautifully uh, uh, drawn. They are, um, they're, 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 there's a lot of detail. Some of the other, some of the other horror artists, they may be a little more, basic um you know not doesn't have that quite that that kind of depth but this is this is beautiful stuff and and weirdly the way he draws the grotesque is very beautiful as well it's it's spellbinding it's it's stuff that you can't help but be drawn to and not really in a 
even though it, it not really in so much in a gory way, but it, it, in a sort of strange, it is it is it is grotesque, but it's it's so beautifully drawn. It's um, I think he's one of the artists that 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 does that in a way that I don't think anybody else does. Yeah, I think a lot of like I how I got into his work was I literally saw a random image somewhere in the internet, and I <laughs> kind of then looked around like who is that. Because it was so unlike any other horror artist I ever seen, and I think a lot of people get to into his manga work through that they just see a, a panel somewhere and then look it up like who is this artist. So I think uh, is it worth giving a bit of background to some of the sort of the, the things like uh, um, the, the the manga Halloween magazine that he got into and and that sort of so there were a few. Uh, manga around that time uh, to me i mean just to give a kind of equivalent they, they kind of feel a bit like the sort of 50s ec comics william gaines kind of vault of horror that kind of thing that that you know you often have stories that have a bit of a twist at the end um uh, a little kind of what the americans would call a zinger um you know and I, it might be a little bit dismissive to kind of compare it in that way but that it, it, it gives an idea of what to um expect from from these the from the original mangas doesn't it yeah you know what i had a really hard time finding as well um like his whole kind of body of works how big it is because he did so many of these magazines yeah. And a lot of his work is short stories, so I could not get a really good sense. Though, if any listeners know, <laughs> have some kind of definitive list of how big his body of work is, I would really love to know that. Um, but, like, for example, um, um, Junjito Horror Comics Collection, which was published in English by Comic One, it has 16 volumes. Almost all of them have about five or six stories in them. So that's, mm. that alone is like 65 stories. Mm. And then there's loads of other collections with overlapping stories and other stories. And there's just so many of them. He's a very industrious artist. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 a very, and a lot of those stories, I think also it's, it's worth saying that they, you know, they're, they're sometimes they're 20, 40 pages. They're not like... In, in, in diff, you know, to kind of break the comparison with things like Balls of Horror, which are sort of five, ten pages. You know, these are are quite reasonable works. They are, you know, like a like a full, you know, what, what we would know in American terms as a sort of comic book size of sort of twenty, thirty pages at least. Um, and he does, as you were kind of talking about some of the kind of the, the most famous creations. So we we've, we've already kind of talked about Tommy, um, which is a very well known kind of ongoing series. Um, Uzu Miki, Miki, um, which will will come on to as well. Arcade Spiral. Um, there's Jio. Uh, also, even within those collected works and the, the mangas, these quite often got the same characters kind of coming up. So you've got a uh, Soichi, who is a very strange child who chews nails all the time and gets up to all sorts of of things, but always comes well, uh, pretty much. All the time comes a cropper of his own um, own devices uh, that he, he he seems to want to get up to. And um, the Oshikiri uh, is another character who turns up quite often. Um, there's the he's a uh, Hikazuru, sorry Hikaziri siblings who turn up quite often. So the, even even within those that aren't the sort of the big well known. Um, characters. Uh, there's lots of other characters that he comes back to quite often, you know, and, and there'll be some that I think do make up several volumes themselves of those collected stories. Um, so, I mean, his he's work was... I mean, how... how I mean, I don't know how... how and, and maybe Collect can kind of come in here as well. Do we know how quickly his work took off in terms of... Uh, particularly, you know, in Japan, how... how how popular became and you know and in terms of just the manga how do we feel that that you know, how influential do we feel he was that work was so i mean for me it's quite difficult because i was introduced to his work through the film so i didn't 
read the manga first. And so I got the Tome manga afterwards. So I'm not sure about how how the manga took off. I mean, I think somebody might... Um, I mean, I know that he's, you know, the kind of most famous and most noted and the most um, uh, uh, person that you see references to, particularly in Japanese horror films. Um, but I'm not sure in terms of how soon it took for the manga to take off. Well, maybe it's, it's kind of a good time to start diving into some of these adaptions because, I mean, uh, there is... He, his stuff has been adapted time and time again over the years. The earliest one I've seen reference to, and, and you can actually find it on the on the on the, or I found a, a copy of it on the web, um, is uh, the fearsome melody, which was done as a live oh. action segment from uh, a drama series called Dramadas, um, aired on Kansai Television. Um, and done as a sort of 25-minute segment. So, I mean, presumably by that time, his work is starting to find mm. a, a, an audience, as you would, I mean, as you would kind of hope. Um, uh, you can find it on the internet. I did find it. Um, usefully, of course, no English subtitles. It does <laughs> actually seem to have um, Chinese subtitles, though, which is uh, interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a knockoff of an old VCD or something, then. Yeah, it could be, could be. Um, but... You know, I think between that, it doesn't feel like his work really sort of uh, gets picked up until you start to get the, the we we get into the J horror boom and yeah. we start to get these 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 yeah. adaptions. Um, yeah. And even then, I think if you kind of run through some of the the the, the names. Uh, the, the the actual titles the way they get released is quite problematic as well on top of that because mm -hmm. we've got we've got actual feature films going at the mm -hmm. same time as uh, TV series in the in the late yeah. 90s which then get cut chopped mm -hmm. up and adapted into burning into films yeah. that all gets very confusing. <laughs> yeah. it does. But I mean, I mean, let, let, let's chat a bit about the Tommy uh, kind of film series as it is, mm. um, because it starts because uh, I was. I, I have to admit, I hadn't watched it. I, I'd read the, the, the original comic books. I hadn't watched it. The first um, the first film really starts in quite a, a problematic way because, and this isn't the first time this happens for John Dieter's work uh, by any means, but we start with what is um, effectively a sequel to a couple of the early stories from yeah. to me. Mm. So it's basically Photograph and Kiss, um, which are fairly early on in uh, the... Um, and a sequel. So you are, a, as a viewer, you are immediately at a, 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 you know, just trying to catch up with what the hell's going on and what, you know. So you're actually kind of expected to know some of the history and they're not even, mm -hmm. uh, presumably in the timing, they're not, because mm -hmm. that first film was 1998. There's, there's yeah. quite a distance between those stories and, and the film. So that's perhaps not the best way to start a film franchise. No, I mean, no. I mean, I, I kind of think the thing is, is that if you look at Nakata and you look at Chimuzu, and, and we're looking at kind of the same period for the kind of J horror taking off, 
is that they worked in TV. And and so it was interesting when I was doing some work on Juon and you look back to like the earlier stuff, um, there's actually stuff that is repeated in the later stuff. So, and, and I, I think, and, and what, what kind of surprised me was actually if I knew, if I'd watched the earlier stuff, I would have had more of an idea of what I was watching. <laughs> so I think that kind of, you know, that not, perhaps not as, it's not necessarily, I think, especially the, the Tommy films are not necessarily narrative cinema as such. You know, they're, they're kind of, they're very episodic. Mm. Um, and yes, they, they kind of, they have characters throughout and they have like, they do have stories to them. Um, but that's really not why you're watching them. You're not watching mm. them because in, in, in a way is you have this like immortal um, uh, sort of girl stroke woman who cannot be killed. And so you can basically do anything with her because she can come back in it in any way so you can i mean i think it's a sort of weird thing that she's that, yeah that, that, that she can be dismembered in all sorts of ways i, yeah. I think i mean yeah. even um don't you kind of describes it sort of like a lizard's tail but you know yeah. if, if, if the tail and the the you know the, the other bits of the lizard can kind of grow back and that's that's what she is the sort of strange yeah it's, and it's yeah, yeah and it's very it, it, in a way things it, a lot of this is very Japanese, and I don't mean that in a kind of very Orientalist way, but very much within tradition. So mm -hmm. I, if you look at kind of Mike's work, um, uh, the MPD Psycho Detective series has a serial killer that grows flowers out of people's brains. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. You, it's a very, it's, it, it's such a, I, I think these films belong to kind of a bit of a different tradition to the other J-horror films. Mm. I, th I think these these and the other kind of films based upon um, horror manga in particular um, have that kind of tradition. And so I think one of the things that, that, that you kind of mentioned when we were looking at this before was like the guinea pig manga. And of course, the guinea pig series kind of predates this. Mm. Um, but it's it's kind of in lots of ways it's more problematic than than like these films. Um, I think that I mean these are not. If you go to watch any of these films, and I think the other a lot of the other adaptions of his work, these are not high budget films. These are really low budget films, mm. and um, and it shows. And it shows. And I think part of the problem is because these films in a way should have these like really good special effects because that's what his writing's about. You kind of lose that in translation because the budget's not very high, so they don't have the money to do that. So some of the effects look a bit shoddy. Mm. Um, and I think, I think comparatively, and I think even if you go all the way through the series, which is from 1998 to 2011, um, they kind of progressively seem to get kind of lower budget. I think that's the way for any franchise, though. Um, but I think, I think in lots of ways, these films are a missed opportunity. Mm. Um, I think that... And I, I mean, my kind of kind of question back to you about this is, and I started watching the Netflix series, is whether you can actually take his work and adapt it to film, non-anime, and whether that works, or whether whether those adaptions that are kind of anime adaptions, whether those are better, whether they're closer than the films can be. I don't think we'll, we'll probably kind of pick this up a few times as we go along, but I mean, that is a good question, I think, because you've got this difficulty here with, on one hand, you're not really 
necessarily representing the, the actual real beauty of his work. You know, these creations, um, you know, the listeners won't know that um, uh, Colette's decided to have a, a lovely Janja Yitu still of a, of a massively, massive headed, evolving Tame uh, behind her there. Um, y- representing that in, in live action, you need a massive, you need a, you need a very resourceful budget. And I think even the sort of the, the, the 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 grotesque that you can get from say the kind of the the particularly in the early days of the sort of Tokyo Gore, uh, Gore Police and mm. those kind of films that, that that can do that side of it it's not still not the same as as the how Jungle who would would his stuff would actually look it you know it it, it, it invariably it's going to end up more in a sort of a guinea pig line of of, of mm-hmm. um, you know kind of basic special effects mm-hmm. you know so you, you you can't necessarily represent it in that way. On the other hand, and I'll say we are going to end up coming back to this, as an anime, unsurprisingly, things te- go very, very close to what he's done. Mm-hmm. So then there's a question of how much is actually being adapted beyond turning mm-hmm. something into a moving image. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, 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 it is a question. And, you know, and I, I, you know, and I think there is a, for me, I think that there's a, there's a, it's a bit like a, a cover version. If the cover version doesn't mm. really add anything new, then I'm not personally. I'm not. I mean, this, mm-hmm. is, this is my my, my takeaway: that a, a, a moving image versus a comic book image isn't enough of a difference to make me want to go to the yeah. the animated yeah. version. But that's that's my opinion, yeah. and I think we can talk yeah. about this a bit more when we get to some of the yeah. the animated versions yeah. as well about that part. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the live action, um, and yeah, and the guys, you know, James and and. You know, yeah. Um, you know, but I actually have a lot of the same thoughts about, like, uh, specifically about the Tomie series than uh, Colette. Mm. That uh, it doesn't because they are very episodic because they most of them mm. take material from several mm. different Tommy stories. So they don't. They, it doesn't make very good narration. It doesn't make super good filmmaking. It for fans who have read their mm. comics. I mean, there's a bit of a novelty value there watching. It's like, oh, I know that's from that story and that's from that story. And oh, how nicely they put together there. But if you know nothing about the comics, mm. it, they most of them do not come across as very good films, unfortunately. Mm. And I mean, and visually, I, I haven't seen all of them. Um, but I <laughs> yet to see a live action Junji Ito film that actually kind of comes anywhere near his visual style. Mm. The Tommy series definitely doesn't. <laughs> and it's, it's an interesting. I mean, uh, uh, the 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 this strange attempt to 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 try and create this uh, franchise with you know uh, to, to to kind of you know what we we start to see with the Ring and mm. um, with the Juon series, mm. and it does feel like we we. That there's the same effort made here, you know. You've got the the, the John creator who comes in and yeah. later on does uh, one yeah. of the the, the, the sequels. Um, and I do feel I I mean I will kind of come back to the, his kind of influence. I do feel like some of these these do in part, you know, maybe they kind of draw on the sort of the some some you know Japanese traditions, but they also uh, particularly for for. Um, the Juan creator, you know, he, he that the, the, they are drawing on, uh, you know, that 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 he that that his style mm. is in some ways it is an influence on how people are approaching, mm. um, yeah, approaching the horror. I mean, the the the, mm-hmm. the Juan series is very episodic. Yeah, that's even right. though it's kind of a very repetitive mm. episodic, yeah. but it is a very episodic kind of, and and sometimes at its best, I think, does work with these sort of parallel stories. Mm. That go on at the same time, you know, and then they kind of mm-hmm. start to overlap. I mean, I, I kind of think I always have this thing when I'm looking at cinema from somewhere else is that often what we consider to be narrative cinema is different. Um, so, you know, yes, John is episodic, but I think that's a feature of Japanese cinema. You know, I, I think it having these these kind of stories that overlap um, has something to do with a 
different type of narratology or a different type of storytelling that we see in manga. Um, so I, I can see the Juan series, Shimizu's Juan series, as very close to, to kind of um, horror manga in the way in which it approaches narrative. Um, so, I, and I think one of the things that we do when we're faced with films from a different country is we try and get them to fit our kind of frames of reference. And if you look at any of the kind of John films or the ring, as they go on, they get more like narrative in terms of Western narrative cinema. They've become more, you know, more streamlined, if you like. Um, so, so there is a very different narrative tradition that you find in like Chinese cinema and Korean mm. cinema as well. Um, and so, and I think if you have a sense of how that works, it becomes easier to understand that they might work differently, logically differently. Um, and, and, and so I always think when I'm doing this work and I'm kind of coming back to this because um, the kind of East Asian Gothic book is due to the publishers in a couple of months. So I'm, kind of <laughs> I'm returning to this. Um, having kind of done work on like Indonesian horror, Singaporean horror, Taiwanese horror. Um, so it's really been interesting looking back at some of the Japanese. And I think Japan's the same as Hong Kong in which it's really inventive, mm. but the horror really kind of goes places. I also think that as kind of like Tommy goes on and as like J-horror goes on, is that these kind of flatter films that we can kind of see in part in the Tommy films um, are actually made for an international audience. Mm. That, that's my thing about things like The Machine Girl and all those films. Yeah, They're not made for Japanese audiences. They're made for Western audiences. Yeah. Um, and so they have, a, they have a very distinct market. Um, so I, and I think that's one of the problems with what happened to Japanese cinema, was Japanese horror cinema, was we had all these kind of really wonderful inventive films with these, you know, really strong protagonists, particularly female protagonists. And then there was this real lull, and then we get these kind of very cheaply made semi-pornographic films which are made for a very specific marketplace. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things I think is whether that kind of brings back a sort of demise in Japanese horror cinema um, that it's kind of struggling to come back to. Um, but, you know, the Tommy series of films are interesting. They don't have to be good films to be <laughs> worth talking about. Mm. Um, and I always think that's really important that, you know, we can kind of distinguish what a good film is. We can say that special effects aren't very good. But some of the things that the Tommy film deals with are really interesting. So one of the films has got in kind of like this um, evil, incestuous plot, but also this kind of lesbian kind of plot. Um, so there's some really interesting things that these films touch on that, you don't necessarily find in in some of the other more more mainstream horror films. Mm, definitely, mm. I don't know. I mean, I think with the Tommy series, I mean, a lot of it is something Colette was saying before, just about the low budgets. I mean, I think they're they kind of hark back to the model of the first, you know, the first John ones being made straight for video slash TV. So I, I think, especially the first Tommy in like nineteen ninety eight, is just it is just that it's just a very <laughs> not opportunistic in a bad way but it's just you know they have material there they're looking for stuff to adapt and mm. even after that well, I think they're these films exist in a weird a, a weird space because they're mm -hmm. both because of the source material but even just in terms of how the Japanese film industry works in terms of like financing and funding films mm -hmm. because by that stage you know we're you know the first one is it's like pre-ring and mm -hmm. you know pre all that and most of the other ones are after it but raising you know, for in Japan, you have such a divide between the, the big studio films and then the yeah. independent sector. So to make the um, 
you're talking about like the sushi typhoon types of films, everything which yeah. were made for Western audience because they're basically funded through pre-selling them to international mm. audiences because you couldn't fund those films any other way. So they were, it wasn't, yeah, it's not so much cynical, but I, I think funding like independent Japanese films or the, we, they don't really have quite the same sort of low low budget market as we do. And it's changing a bit now with, with you, you know, streaming platforms take on stuff for mm. domestic audiences as well as international. But um I think the Tomia films, especially those ones in the mid two thousands, were kind of just before that wave and, yeah. and because they're based on source material most Western people hadn't heard of. And a lot of the covers certainly I was I was getting these mostly from like Hong Kong DVDs for from dear old D D D D house for like twenty five Hong Kong dollars a pop. <laughs> Awful quality, of course. Terrible subtitles. I don't think it made much of a difference. But if you look just looking at the covers of them, they they all look either like Ring or uh, or the Grudge even if they weren't anything like it, apart from Forbidden Fruit, which has tried to trick people into thinking they were seeing softcore lesbian <laughs> film. And I'm sure many people were very disappointed <laughs> with that as well, because <laughs> I think that the front cover just had them almost kissing, and that was pretty much the extent of it in the film. But um, yeah, they exist in that weird space where they're not quite one thing or the other. Uh, so I can see why they remained at kind of low budgets. And at the same time, if they're being churned out for low budgets based on you know, having some pretty modest sales expectations, it's it's kind of a no-brainer to keep going with them, but also difficult to have actually ever broken out of that sort of sphere they were in. And I I enjoy all the Tomia films. They're not, as you yeah. say, they're not great, but they're still... Uh, I think the first one is still... I still like the first one a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the others are... Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> they're not very long. They're not very long, we can say that. Some of them are really short. Um, and they make absolutely no sense at all because they make no they don't reference it it's interesting that the a lot of the manga adaptation films go to such pains to refer back to the the mangas or to explain stuff even for like domestic audiences um whereas these just don't not even slightly i mean even the fact that she heard it's not even just that if you chop off her head like she can grow it back but then if some of her dna spills on somewhere then she can make a copy of herself so you end up with these like tommy versus tommy stuff and it's just yeah. It's nuts. Um, it's they never they never make any, they don't explain anything at all, which is which is absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. I mean, I've never I've never read the manga and everything. I, I'm not really a, a, a manga guy and stuff, but um, I, I think the narratives it's a it's a weird combination of you know being lazy, frankly, and just sticking to okay. Here's a Tommy, a couple Tommy stories. What do we like about them? I like this one. I like this one. I'd put them together. No one's going to care. We'll slap a ring cover on it and everyone will buy it. It's a mix. It is quite lazy filmmaking, but at the same time, weirdly, that then does kind of tap into the the kind of odd nature of the source material. Um, because if he's written so much stuff as he's written, you know, it, I, I'm sure there's a lot of overlap in the writing and. By that, there's a few Tommy bits which the Jew on when you get to the Jew on films later, yeah. not not the TV ones. They left. There's a few parts they mm-hmm. left directly from Tommy, mm-hmm. some of the some of the school yeah. stuff, and and vice versa in the other Tommy yeah. films. So, mm-hmm. it's, I I I think it just ties into like early two thousands, not just Japanese but Asian horror. It's just such a yeah. mad, <laughs> it's just such, such a mad mess. To be honest, and I, and I like it, but it's a mess. And I think that 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 comes into kind of let, let, let's talk about because there, there was a bit of an explosion of yeah. of adaptions of his work sort of you know sort mm. of the two thousand two thousand and one and so on. yeah just sort of into the early two thousands yeah um, one of the the best known of those is of course you know the adaption of the Uzumaki um, mm. load of uh, series of books and that was mm-hmm. quite interesting because. The manga hadn't actually finished. Hadn't yes. it? Rather like a, a Kira, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you know, in the same way that Kira had, was still going on when the film was made of it, the manga was still not finished. So, I, I think it had an impact on the film. うちは渦巻きに呪われている。びっくりした。びっくりしたみたいだね。怒ったのかい？びっくりさせるのは僕の趣味なんだ。渦巻き模様は人の目を中心に引きつける力がある。もう集めてくるんだ。<笑> 
あふれかえったあずまきを見ている親父はよかったああ私はね小島さん<笑>しかしクローズ町での怪奇現象はこれだけではなかったのです。<笑>この街ももう終わりだ I, I personally find this one of the most interesting of the adaptions of his yeah. work and I think for me there is a real effort to try and make yeah like the guy turning into a snail and all these kind of ideas of this spiral turning up again and again and again to actually try and make this work in a live action um And I think, I mean, there's obviously a bit more of a budget with this one than, than many of the other films that we, we'll be talking about that, that helps this actually kind of come about. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, the, 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 the fatal flaw is t h e r e s the sort of the, the, the Game of Thrones situation where there is no, there's no end to work towards. Um, uh, like there is in the, the, you know, because that hadn't really happened, so they had to do something else. But. <laughs> Well, they, couldn't have really, they couldn't have filmed the end of the manga anyway. I mean, this、no. is one of the few ones I've read because that goes proper, you know, it's fascinating, but it goes proper like into his kind of cosmic horror、mm. you know,、yeah. towards the end of it. And you, even if you had a massive budget, it would look ridiculous, the, the ending of that manga. Yeah, I think even as an anime, it would look ridiculous. But well, reading it I mean,、we'll、as a comic, it actually works. Out, you know. we, so. Well, yeah, we, we may or may not, I guess. We'll see what they, they do. But that, that film just picks, in, it just picks about four or five scenes. Yeah. From, from, the, from the manga and just says fine. And it doesn't even vaguely link them together that much. But、no. it's just visually so interesting、um, that it actually. And I think part of that as well, because we were kind of getting into.、Um, and I grouped the first Tom yet into it. We, there was certainly in the West, there was kind of a fascination with seeing these kind of levels of not quite body horror, but bizarre, mute, almost like surreal mutations of you know, human forms that we just kind of weren't so used to seeing and everything. And I think.、Mm -hmm. The first t o m i y a tapped into that, not on purpose, but、uh, I think Uzumaki did more. It was, I can still remember seeing the trailers and when it was playing some festivals.、Um, that's where you were seeing you know, the guy wrapped up in the washing machine and stuff like that,、mm -hmm. which d o e s n t make any damn sense, but it's very, very cool, unsettling visual. So、mm -hmm. I, I, I think you know, it doesn't, there's no narrative to it, but it's a very memorable film and it's definitely the, the director put a lot more effort into pretty much all the t o m i y a directors. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's definitely visually a lot closer. Yeah. To, yeah. And, and also atmosphere wise, it kind、mm -hmm. of has that kind of dread to it.、Mm. Um, there's kind of like a pressing atmosphere to it that you kind of get from the comic as well.、Mm -hmm. But it's, what is it, like an hour and a half long or something?、Um, less, less, I think. Yeah. yeah so you, you can't really. They, they, because they're. You know, collection of stories is like this take case. <laughs> it's a yeah, long, it's, it's, it's a long, it's a long, it's really, yeah, it's a proper long, you know, collection of like volumes in Uzumaki. And they don't even try with this film, which is probably, probably for the best. You know, it's surprisingly it, good though. I, I bought it、mm. for years and years. I didn't、mm. want to watch it because I was like, there's no way、yeah. there is a good film version. And it's not, it's not brilliant, but it is actually surprisingly good. Yeah. I, I was、mm. positively surprised when I finally watched it. I was like, okay. But、yeah. you, you, you kind of got in the, the gist of the work, you kind of got in the atmosphere of the work and somehow managed to translate、mm. it here. But、um, there's, a, there's a new version coming out. Or well, is it an I mean, anime? I'm not sure. But it, it is, it is. It's、yeah. uh, co produced or distributed by Adult Swim.、Um, and it's,、mm. it's, it's actually kind of looking, you know, doing the research for this, you know, the. the The broadcast date has kind of shifted a couple of years. <laughs> the, the, to be, at the moment, it's、times. supposed to be this year.、Um, anyway, so we'll see. And, and the trailer does make it look. Well, interestingly, the trailer makes it look exactly. I mean, they're open on exactly the same. I don't know, he says kind of opening up the,、uh, the same scenes <laughs> as you get in the, in the comic book, except 
it's all it seems to be all black and white where of course uh, well in my oh. edition at least it's you get uh. the first few pages in colour and then it goes all black and white uh. um, so yeah we, we, we can we can come back to this but it, it, again it does look like it's it's very very closely following what we have in the, in the book and not you know and, and, and that yeah we'll, we'll, we, we can come back to that so there's yeah. a lot of stuff I mean it, it, so I guess because of this this you know the whole kind of J-horror thing was going on the, the, you know, looking through the kind of list, there were a lot of films, a lot of uh, live action films, kind of happening around the the the, the, the two thousand. Mm. Lots of ones that, that um, I'm sure we, well, I mean, I, I, the, most of us probably won't have seen. Um, mm. Some of them were kind of to do with TV productions. I think you know, there's, I found reference to one, Great Market Town, which, uh, according to one site, with, with no home recordings, this is considered lost media. Um, <laughs> the face burglar. Um, <laughs> That's a great one. Face burglar. You know, and there, there's a, an early version of actually, which is one of I think one of my my favourite stories. Uh, Jandy Atu does, which is the hanging balloons. Um, so there is a is a, a live action version of that, which suffers from very much from a low budget. I mean, I I found a version of it again. I found a version of it. You can find a version online. No English subtitles, of course. <laughs> uh, it it tries to follow the comic book very closely. Um, and actually, it's, there's three stories in that as well. So there's there's the Devil's Logic, the Long Hair in the Attic, which is another one of the stories that comes up again and again and again, um, and the Hanging Balloons. And you know they look so, the, you know because it looks cheap and you're trying to create this this thing. I mean, should we talk about the, the I mean the Hanging Balloons? Just kind of a, a, an offside. The story is that the the people start to turn up dead. Um, and and uh, you know look like they they've committed suicide. So you're dealing with some you know there's kind of a recurring theme with with, with, with Japanese media of, of, of suicide. Um, but then it turns out that everyone's being followed around by these big balloons that have their faces on, and they're trying to track them down. Quintessentially Junji Ito because it's so yeah. so mad, um, but but amazing at the same time. Um, and there's some other ones that I think James you've seen from this era. There's the Kakashi. Yes, I love the that. That's a great film. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's quite a few. There's a few good ones. I mean, Kaka, Kakashi is a great film. Uh, I, I always stand by that. But that is a shoehorning of his work into into J horror, you know, type of tropes. And it's by what's uh, no, uh, Tsuyotaya. Uh, my pronunciation's awful. Then the fellow who did like Ring Ring Zero Birthday, where we kind of had the mm. the weird carry take on her and Sadako, which made probably still made sen- more sense than some of the later ones, where she's some mad butterfly or something. And there is, it's it's a good film. It, it's just that it you kind of have this mix of sort of Ito style, like the dread and everything, then shoehorned in like a very traditional long haired ghost, but it's very creepy. It's very atmospheric film. So I I, I would definitely recommend. Uh, Kakashi Mar- Marune is just uh, insane. It doesn't make. It's one of the most bizarre films I've seen. I, I I can't tell you if it's good or not. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even have a story. It's just some mad old guy kidnaps girls and makes them into living dolls, but in a really weird and freaky way, and they come back to life and do stuff. And it's just it's a it's a weird acid trip of a film. Not on purpose either, because it's it's almost like ro- the room levels of incompetent filmmaking. It's just <laughs> it's a fascinating it's a fascinating film. I've got a, it's one of those ones that actually got released over here on DVD in some awful pan and scan type you know thing. Or which might looking back might not have been an awful pan and scan. It might have been the way it's supposed to look. But mm. it's a bizarre acid trip of a film. In some ways, what might make it very close to the original vision <laughs> or I says oh, I can't tell if it's on purpose or not but I, I, I have I have memories of Mariner. I don't know if they're fond or not but I, I, I would say it's worth watching <laughs> <laughs> but yeah as you said before though that was just that, that period where there, there was just a rush to adapt anything you know to, to push it into like a J-horror ring Juon type context and everything for better or worse and I don't as has been kind of touching on his work doesn't doesn't fit with that it's not that kind of traditional feel sorry for the long-haired ghost who's you've got some weird schemes and jumps out a lot it doesn't fit into that type of thing this is from the the, the list that, that we've put together and maybe other things that we missed but so you get some more in a sort of up towards the the mid the mid 90s uh mm. mid 90s the mid <laughs> 2000s um yeah. and then um apart from the tommy series this 
it dies back because you kind of got you know, the J horrors kind of dying back, and and really there's there's only things like um, apart from that there's the Jo Tokyo Fish Attack um, oh, crap, anime. Yeah. Oh. Which I, in parts, looks very close to his his work. It's not. Um, I did kind of rewatch that recently. I, I in tone. I mean, basically reduces again. This is quite a long, ongoing series of volumes. Yeah. I think there's something like four yeah. or five volumes in the in this in the series. But um, there is. Um, it reduces it to sort of more of a disaster zombie movie kind of narrative. Which is fine. Uh, I which I don't mind that part of it, but I do find the the the, the actual the style of animation suddenly becomes, to my mind, quite kind of sleazy and salacious. Oh, it it's does. Not something that's it not does. that's that but which is not a fit for for what Jun Yitu does. No, it does. It throws in a, a couple of those scenes which were sort of first and foremost in the trailer, um, yeah. uh, as I remember, and it's the yeah, animation's it's awful. Perhaps, perhaps, it's, yeah, I mean, perhaps it's no cheap surprise. And terrible looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, perhaps no surprise that uh, good old uh, Joe released this around the same time. That's as right, Pit Zombie. Yeah, yeah, Terracotta that's true. Terracotta didn't it was played at Terracotta Festival as well. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah we I do remember. I do remember seeing it, and it's uh, you know having actually. I mean, having said before, I haven't read much of his stuff. I think I actually. It sounds like I have read quite a bit because I've read all of the Gyo, and it's it it is a much less successful. I mean, you know, as we said, Uzumaki. Mm -hmm takes a few parts of it and just weaves them together into this mm -hmm. kind of mad sort of surreal but quite effective cosmic horror. Gyo doesn't. I think it just takes a few parts and then it wraps it around both with, as you said, Andy, the, the kind of disaster film plot where you just endless scenes of computer-generated fish <laughs> with legs running around the streets and then just this, the pointless thing about the, the girls who are in the, um, the cabin and gradually become infected. But it's not even vaguely as... The, the sort of grotesquerie, not not gore, just I mean like the sort of body transformations are not even vaguely as um, unsettling as they are in in the manga. Yeah. So yeah. it's a very, it's a strange one. I don't really get why they why they actually bothered with that. <laughs> to be honest, I suspect it was very very low budget though, because some of the animation is awful. It's really really bad animation in that. Not a fan. I enjoyed it when no. I saw it at Terracotta, but I was pretty drunk. And I, <laughs> I saw it again on DVD, and I just no no. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like it. And then I don't think there's a there's a lot, or at least not a lot, that's made out of uh, of Japan until we get to. And here's where we kind of come up to the Netflix series. But what I hadn't mm. realised um, before looking into Junk G Two Maniac does air quotes good for radio again is that actually mm. there was an earlier series which was had entirely the same mm. creative team. Mm. Uh, oh, Junk Two Collection. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, from 2018 and. Basically, doing for those, you know, for guys, I mean, you've watched some of the, the, the series uh, doing mm. exactly the same things, exactly the same method, different f opening, closing theme tunes, um, but with some of the, the same characters. The only kind of difference is that was distributed by Crunchyroll, and now they've moved to Netflix um, and added to oh, the, okay. the, the tagline the Jap was it Japanese Tales of the Macabre. Because yeah. it seems you need to. Oh, add I didn't read really. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. Okay, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I heard it. I didn't. I didn't even know that's what this was. So uh, it's it's weird that it's um, I mean yeah, I mean it's kind of advertises something new, but it's, it's in so many ways just kind of carrying on. They haven't overlapped any of the stories quite deliberately. Um, and and so what do we make of you know the the, the what we've seen of, of of 
the new series? <laughs> uh, it took me a while to get into it. Like first couple of episodes, I was I, I wasn't convinced, but then there, there's good stuff there. Like not all episodes are as good as the others, but uh, no. there's some really nice adaptations there. I think. I think again we come back to exactly the same problem with like the first uh, Tommy A film. One of one of my my big problems with the the series is that near, there are several episodes that are from these recurring series like so so uh, so, so Ichi, like the uh, you know the um, uh, Oshikiri uh, series um, and and even with the siblings one as well which mm. opens I don't think that's a great opening episode I think that's, oh, that's, so that's no. really poor Completely I mean that's the worst agree. way to start it but they they yeah. often start with a clip that is mm. from another story. Yes. And then they carry yeah. on with... So, again, we've got this thing of, oh, well, yeah, you, you already know these stories. Yeah. You know, so it's not... I don't, I, I, I don't understand why, you know, it, it, that's not helping the, the, the viewer who is coming to this as, as something mm-hmm. new. It's just really, really confusing because you're like, mm-hmm. well, okay, mm-hmm. that's a clip of what... You, because the way you, you normally see it as a narrative is you'd go, okay, well, that's going to happen by the end or that's going to have something to do mm-hmm. with the end and it's mm-hmm. actually completely unconnected. Um, and I don't know if some of those were in the collection. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think they were... Often I don't know so I think they were. Um, but it's a, it, that's a, a weird decision to make that, that, that doesn't help. Um, yeah. and some other weird decisions the, they do the photograph um, to me story in this mm. um, and for some reason that goes into a 4-3 ratio for, for no apparent reason I don't understand <laughs> it's like they found an old animation from the 90s that nobody finished and they uh, decided to, to, to carry it on I, th- there's some very strange creative decisions in this that I, mm. that I, I don't think help a, a new viewer to these stories. Um, you know, at the same time as some of the stories, I think, like, like again, you know, come back to the hanging balloons, um, you know, which is, is a great story. The, the, you know, the long hair in the attic, um, which has done a, a reasonable version. They're very close to the originals. There isn't really anything that's being massively added to these stories. And of course, they look because his because of his artwork, they do look very close to the original. You know, so like sometimes, like, like pain to to, to, to to pain to pain you are just you know from the comic books you're following exactly the same mm. visualization of this and that's where i kind of struggle with the adaption mm. but yeah you know, like long here in the attic i mean that's a, another yeah. story that's very good that that, that that to me feels like the science Seno film <laughs> <laughs> you know it's got the, the this hair all the hair extensions <laughs> you know or the... um but it's uh I, I, I just it, it feels like this has been done for people who know and love yeah. these stories and they just want to en- to enjoy them again yeah. um, but I mean for me I, I wonder if if you know I, 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 I for, my, for the, even for the ones that work very well I, I'd still rather go back to the to the yeah. manga version than I would the the, the new version it's it's, it's a yeah. weird <laughs> Mm, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a strange. Yeah, I. Yeah, I. I kind of. For me, it seems like a missed opportunity. So I kind of started watching it, and it doesn't really grab you. This is the yeah. problem, and the problem is because there's so many competing, um, you know, programs to watch, including anime. <laughs> yeah. um, you need to make the viewers stay with it. Mm. And so I'm kind of like two episodes into it and I'm kind of feeling, well, you know, I have all this other stuff to watch that, <laughs> that seems yeah. to be more interesting. So, and I kind of think it's just a shame that they didn't pay more attention to the potential audience for it. Mm. Um, and, 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 and therefore do kind of like, an introduction so to give it some sense of I, I just really struggled with the first one. I really struggled. Yes. Oh, it was, it's like, it's a really bad it. way to start the series. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are those I, I mean even I think uh, even as, as the, the original manga they're 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 not it's not an easy characters to like and it's weird to to 
at least as Netflix is doing it, uh, is really promoting it. I think you, you, if you look online, you can even find an introduction from John Jiu mm. himself, a very short introduction to, to, to the mm. series. So it's mm. got his, you know, it's got mm. his stamp of approval at least. Mm. Although I don't think he's really creatively involved in this, um, mm. which again, you know, which which in some ways might be part part of the problem. Um, you know, if that would help, but you know, he's not. He's not the sort of Neil Gaiman who's trying to kind of get involved and help, <laughs> you know, manage these. I, yeah. I, as a series, yes, I think you could have done it in many ways that, that, that you know, it's, it's weird to kind of have it launch on Netflix and, and actually be looking to find a, a new audience and yet not yeah. try and do that a bit yeah. rather than just kind of just, yeah. just do exactly the same as you've done with previous series. Yeah. I, mean, this, I, yeah, I could see ways that you could make this much more playful, that you, you play with the fact that there are these recurring characters. You can mm. almost kind of for a better word, kind of metaverse it that 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 you know, in the same way that the reboot, the last reboot of the Twilight Zone series, that that, that some of these things start yeah. to play with the yeah. the characters kind of coming into the different stories, rather than just do a very very in weird, weird ways it pays a lot of respect to the originals, mm. but then. And another thing that annoyed me is actually in some of the some cases, in a few of the stories, it really mucks up the sort of the end, you know, mm-hmm. again, the American phrase of the zinger, it really mucks that up by just doing something very odd at that sort of last few minute, few couple of minutes and, and just ruins it, just ruins the whole kind of like twist in the tale that should be should be there, that should be like the, yeah. the, 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 the narrative, you know, yeah. pun, uh, final punch. Yeah. It's, it's just an odd, odd, odd way to go about this, that it's, it's it's not. It does not really do either very well. Yeah. I don't know, is there like a lack of like belief that Junji the film adaptations or even anime adaptations will find an audience outside the comic fans? Because like everything seems to be very much directed to the comic fans, which mm. is great in a way. It can be great. Like take example of the um, uh, Resident Evil uh, film series, which is. Awful, 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 until the very latest film, which is actually made for the fans of the game. But it probably doesn't work for anyone else who hasn't played the games, because you watch it and you go, what the fuck is going on? I have no idea. But if you played the games, you you watch it and it's like, oh, there's all my favorite parts of the game in this film. <laughs> Finally, they actually done a, done a film about the games. But I feel like the same kind of thing with Junji Ito adaptations, that um, if you if you read the comics, you get something out of them. Mm. But if you if you... Do not have any knowledge. You watch them and gonna kind of go like, uh, "What's what's going on here? I have no mm. reference point here." Mm. And it's like it's, yeah. it's like these anime series. I think there would have been a good opportunity, like you said, to kind of just sell it to a bigger audience, mm. and that's it the... wouldn't have been that difficult to do either. Yeah, but that's the, that's the Netflix problem. I mean, that's just the Netflix problem all over there, isn't it? They don't yeah. really care. The first series of anything, they're just well, okay, well. You know, if you think it's going to work, you'll see if it works, and we'll cancel it after a few episodes. If it's not, if it's not working, if they commit to a second series, then they'll suddenly become more involved in it. And I'm guessing this it wasn't very high budget by the look of it. Um, and you know, it was made in partnership with Japan, so it's you know, it's already sort of guaranteed a certain level of release. So mm. I think, it, for better or worse, usually for the worse, that's just increasing what we're seeing with Netflix. I, I, mm. They never. You know what you're saying, like putting a bit of effort, even a bit of effort seems too much. Like <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, you know, you see it with so many other properties and you get the odd one which sneaks through like uh, the Sandman, probably like you're saying, Andy, because mm-hmm. you have certain levels of involvement from people. But so so much stuff on Netflix uh, is being adapted from source material and, you, you know, <laughs> not really with any uh, constructive thought about how they're actually going to, mm-hmm. you know, attract in people who who aren't already invested in it. So well, I, guess, I think I mean, a classic yeah. example there is Cowboy Bebop, isn't it? Which oh, yes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute, yeah for, exactly. Like a steaming turd into the... I never, into I, I never, I fell asleep halfway through the first episode. I, <laughs> I ne- never went back again. Um, doesn't sound like many other people did either. But <laughs> no, no, no that's, a, that's a good example, though. Um, I, 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 it's not like that level of stuff, but I think this would be... Something I think, which I, is, I mean, I, because I hadn't realised yeah. it before, before actually kind of, uh, kind of reading up on this that it, that there was mm. a, a series before. Yeah, like, it, it, this feels like they that 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 one way or another, this is kind of tagged on to an ongoing. You know, yes, those exactly. Guys have done yeah, yeah, before. exactly. They just bought it, and and they now kind of struggling to sell it to a wider audience. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's um, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's just a very strange 
decision. It's not, a, it's not like a high-profile Netflix Netflix I mean, I, original series where they put a lot of push behind. I don't think. Even some of the style that they they do things in, where they you know like the, over the titles they've got the sort of the video tracking kind of effect yeah, and stuff right, like that yeah. you know which I mean became a bit painful for all of us about ten years ago where it, it ended up mm. being on all things to kind of suggest <laughs> vintage you know um, but yeah. you know who but I, but I, I kind of uh, relate it to you know trying to explain CDs to teenagers now it's like what well, well, this doesn't mean anything what does that mean to, okay. to a young to a to yeah. a younger audience who don't, well, what the, I don't even know what a VHS is. So why would what, yeah. what's the tracking mean? You know, it's a, it's some odd. It's there's definitely a, a nostalgia market for this, but I don't even. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I think it's massively serving that well. No, I mean I, I've, I've seen about half of it. I, I, <laughs> I, it's, I as Colette it's, it's, said, it's, there's just so much patchy. stuff to watch. It's yeah, it's and when there's so much, patchy. absolutely. When when it's not all in, then you, you know then. <sighs> too much other stuff to watch so actually mm. taking the time out to actually go and watch yeah. something i know is going to be up and down and patchy you know it's yeah i don't know i should finish it but i, I don't know if i will So we've got, uh, I mean, in terms of what we've got coming up, we've got mm. the yeah, Izumaki, um, uh, the adult film series that we've, we've mentioned already, and that looks like it's going to be, again, it's going to be very, mm. uh, ver- uh, follow very closely the actual original mm. volumes. Um, isn't there something supposed to be a, a, a reboot of the old uh, Tomoe? There's a live well, action. I mean, that's been kind of talked about for a while, hasn't it? It was all Alexandra Aja, wasn't it? Um... <laughs> I, that, that's another one which has just been yeah, TBC for a long time. I, 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 I don't know. I, I would be surprised if we see it personally, but um, I, it's. I imagine it would. Be, it would have been a Western adaptation anyway, um, which I don't massively have a problem with. Like transplanting no. it from Japan to there. I mean, I, I, I thought the the American Grudge films were fine. I mean, they were no different to the other ones. They're just turning out the turning out the same stuff over and over and over and over again. Uh, especially going back and watching the, the original video ones, and you realise there was nothing new after those two ones. But um, but you know, I, the idea of a Tommy S set in like an American high school, probably on Netflix oh. again, just with a certain budget. I, I don't really see don't really see the point. Uh, you'd have to change. You'd actually have to have a narrative which Tommy doesn't have. You'd have to. They probably give her a backstory. They probably you know, you would just lose any of the the sort of vague point in the series, the existing series for better or worse actually has if if you actually you know start dragging it down into those kind of things you, as you were saying before collect like differences between western expectations for narratives and mm. it would be made to fit that and if you did that i think there's not really there's nothing to tommy yeah it's just, uh, but i think yeah. you know you could actually deconstruct it and, and you know if you did do something that was more like the old uh yeah you know museum of terror term, you know, mm. volumes and actually did see so where the each episode isn't necessarily you last. It would sure, actually sure. be something yeah. really quite interesting. You know, there's actually a yeah. real scope for that. But, um, you know... I mean, they're, they're, I, good. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so, sorry. I saw one of the kind of discussions around, around the series was people were talking about the Thai live-action series. Oh, the from Noah. Noah. Yeah, sure, and yeah, yeah. saying that that kind of was like almost like what Tommy could have been yes. if they'd yeah, adapted. Yeah. And and so that's something that has kind of taken some of those things and been incredibly successful. Mm. Um you know, going into I think we're two seasons down. Two um, seasons, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's so good. I like it that. Of, yeah, it's really good. So it kind of shows you that you kind of just it's so frustrating with this kind of latest kind of anime thing 
is that mm. there hasn't been any there's not enough thought gone into it and yeah. and i'm mm. really really keen that you get people to like read the original manga you introduce the western audience to something that they might not know so mm. you know it's so you have like this cross-cultural understanding and which i think is so important and it's just so frustrating that it's such a missed opportunity yeah mm. yeah and I don't know. I mean, with the Tommy Esther, because there, I don't think there was ever really any details leak, link, leaked about what they were planning to do yeah. with it. So it's kind of, yeah, as you yeah. say, Andy, I mean, if they did it properly or if they, if it was either properly episodic or if it was like Girl, Girl from Nowhere, which is still like basically an anthology. Um, mm. um, yeah, it could be done. I just wouldn't really have too much faith that they would put too much yeah. effort into it because they would not, I'd be surprised yeah. if they had the confidence not to try and you know, sort of make it kind of cookie cutter for what they yeah. think Western audiences, especially Western audiences who haven't read the manga, which would be, you know, the, the breakthrough mm. audience they'd be trying to reach. I, I just wouldn't, mm. it would just become something a lot more normal, I, I would yeah. imagine. I mean, I'm being yeah. cynical about it. Yeah. I like Asha as a director, but he is mm-hmm. kind of one of your go-to guys who will adapt something, yeah. throw in a few good gore scenes. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, he's kind of, he, he hasn't done anything great for a while. Quite a I think while. I think um, yeah, you needed to have the right filmmaker first of all to do it. Yeah, yeah. and because it's one of those stories that I think if you start like over explaining it, if you start making like yeah. you said like making up a backstory, it yes. loses all of its power. It's definitely, the, the whole definitely. point is that she is this character that like, nobody knows where she came from. Why did <laughs> yeah, she come back yeah. from the dead? What is she like? Mm. She's she's in a ghost. Mm. But, no, no. Even, she's not really alive exactly. either. Exactly. So. And even in the manga, it kind of changes and, and evolves as time goes mm-hmm. on. It's like, oh, she's this. Oh, actually, maybe she's this. Oh, and that's yeah. actually a copy. And that's a copy of her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's madness. Because then, like, you could, because you could take it easily, like, in the really weird body horror mm. direction. Yeah. Yeah. But then, that's not really the essence of it either, because the, no, the no. stories are so varied. Yeah. It also it also has like eroguro elements to it, but it's not overly erot- erotic or anything like that. So mm. it's mm. It, there's so much to it. Yeah. yeah, so so much of it's about that. Still, you, you, so many of the the ones I've seen, even just from the films, uh, it, you know, it's the the, fa- the father of a, another school girl becoming obsessed with her, or someone becoming sexually obsessed, with her, never actually managing to get anywhere, of course, with her. And then her like, ha ha ha. Yeah. You know, here's here's an unpleasant ending for you, and I and you're gonna kill me because you can't have me, and I'm gonna come back in some weird mutated form, and I'm gonna get yeah. you. you. You know, so there is yeah, there is definitely a sexual element to it, but it's always it's always kind yeah. of lurking. It's like a an unpleasant kind of thing, which you know the people it's kind of foist on the male characters don't really you know it's kind of a queasy thing more than mm-hmm. anything which actually ever happens. Um, mm-hmm. You know, especially with as we've said the the fake lesbian one. <laughs> I still just laugh. I hope I hope a lot of people bought that DVD yeah. thinking that's what they were getting. Yeah. They were getting some schoolgirl. I hope a lot of people were tricked into that because <laughs> I thought I, mean, that. <laughs> I didn't watch it because of that. But that's what I thought I was getting. Yeah, it's it's you, no, you're not. <laughs> it's not, a, it's not, not a spoiler because I get it's again like yeah. her dad's obsessed with her. The, the other girl's yeah. dad is obsessed with her, mm-hmm. and you know it, it just follows exactly the plot of most of the other Tommy ones. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. It's just not what uh, not what some sweaty palm fellas would have been <laughs> hoping for. <laughs> but I kind of think that distinguishes, I think, his work from mm-hmm. some of these. Other types of work like the Rambo, the Rampo work that we yeah. see quite often, which is much more heavily sexualized and much more erotic. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of based upon that, I think. And, and, and so I kind of think this is interesting because it doesn't necessarily go as far down that line and therefore mm-hmm. isn't as problematic as yeah. some of the other stuff. But I, I think, I mean, my kind of concluding thought is that the manga is beautiful. The mm. drawings are beautiful. How? What do you do about that? That's, I think, the problem. The problem is, it's very difficult to translate the kind mm. of. Yeah. It. I, I just don't know what you do. That's kind of my final kind of thought about this because, I mean, I would say to everybody, go and read the manga. <laughs> That's what you need to do. 
and, and finish um, the and finish the series, the animation yeah. series. Maybe. <laughs> Has, if, if any, if any of us watch, I think the second part of that is optional. To be honest, if you watch, <laughs> is anyone? Actually, if, if any of you actually watched the whole thing of it, then I, I did it. I did it. Hooray! Really, this podcast. I managed to get did, to the do, end. Do you recommend watching all of it? I mean, I I would say. <laughs> I would say I would say a boy I would I would I would cherry pick I will provide you a list um, okay a list that was, I was, was going to say a list you, of which yeah. episodes to watch you'll it's have to give a list the ones that I think are, that yeah. work best um, yeah. and then not massively bother with the rest that would, that would be that would actually be very helpful to be fair <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I agree though I, I think it's, it's he's just I think it's very difficult adapting whether it's manga or, or like Western comics to, to the screen without mm-hmm. either making them ridiculous mm-hmm. or going full mm-hmm. giant Marvel type ridiculous. Yeah, know, and uh, even then, budgets, I think so, there'd yeah. be a real fear. I think the best there, way still... you could you could approach this is to 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 to, to give it to a you know a, a very if you're talking live action, give it to a very visual director who kind of makes yeah. it their own rather than the the anime that just emulates. What's yes. already done, yeah, yeah. or actually yeah. just copied. So it's not even emulate, and you know mm. all the live action, or most of the live action, which is most of these, are, you know, one way have, have suffered from being um, very, you know, but from, from just not having the budgets to kind of make this yeah. this work, and it does yeah. need that, mm. you know, or just avoid those stories that need it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But well, that doesn't yeah, leave you very many stories. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. It's probably a, a more careful choosing of some of the the stories, but a lot of time it's probably quite random. Yeah. They, they just yeah. pick ones, or or you can go back to something like Marinere and just go for it. And yeah. <laughs> and a lot of these, <laughs> you know, and, and again, everyone. kind of with this, as the adaptions go on, there mm. has, you know, we're kind of building up lots of versions mm. of the same stories now. Um, yeah, we are. That's true. You know, the, yeah. And, you know, apart from the fact that somebody might do them very, 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 very mm-hmm. well, there's there's not, you know, it's it's the same. Same, same content. But it's probably, I mean, even aside from Ito's work, it's probably the, the same for, for all these, like, uh, you know, horror yeah. manga. You know, it's only, the guinea pig films are probably the closest ones you'd ever get. Yeah. To stuff, you know, um, because there's nothing to them, you know. <laughs> but, oh, no, I mean, that, you know, I mean, when we get to the later ones, like Mermaid in a Manhole and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they are actually genuinely, I, I would say, very close to the, uh, to the stories. But cool. they... Exist in a very non-commercial context, <laughs> where, you know, where I can't imagine anyone else wanting to do, you know, something similar um, with that level of that. You know, guinea pig films were made in such a specific sort of time and place as well that you you can't really see somebody doing that again. Yeah. Uh, I should add, you know, just interject here that uh, if you are interested in, in knowing more about the guinea pig films, you can go back on one of our early podcasts where James and I chatted. Yes. About but how much we love them in, in, in mm-hmm. detail a lot of detail mm-hmm. <laughs> a great deal of detail justifiably so but, I, I, but yeah I, I think that's my my concluding thought I, I, just, I don't think we'll ever see a great adaptation of his work because there's too much yeah. there's too much sort of wonderfully vague stuff going on in there which is suggestive yeah. whether it's the, yeah. the horror the slightly yeah. queasy erotic, erotic side of it yeah. whether it, just the surrealness of the body horror in there because mm. they're not real gore ones you, you know I mean you get very nasty stuff but even looking at Gyo it's horrible you know it's it's, <laughs> it's it's damnably grotesque but if you I, I think putting it onto screen as we saw in that useless anime it just robs it of yeah. the power so I, I, I would be surprised if we ever saw a great adaptation. And I agree that animation is just, you know, doing screen page for page what you see. There's not too much point, to be honest. I, I would read the manga rather than do that. And, and live action, mm. I don't know. You, yeah, you would need a proper... I'm sure there are some visionary directors out there who <laughs> could do something with a very low budget and, you know, completely rethink it. But I think it would need that complete rethinking, very different to anything we've seen before. So, I don't know. You never know, man. We, li- we live in hope, don't we? <laughs> we live in hope and we keep drinking. <laughs> Which feels like uh, the best way to end this. You know, fingers crossed, but... We're not holding out hope for a classic Jungle Two adaption. No. So that's it for now. Don't forget you can find us and all our and all of our previous episodes on Apple, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe now and you'll never miss an episode. But for now, <laughs> bye. 
Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Aitakatayo. <laughs> <laughs> Tsukiko. Mm-hmm.